Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Jared at 3Cs. Today we're going to be replacing the slave cylinder on Jared Fortner's hard enduro bike. The only reason why we're doing this is when we were in Virginia like a month ago, a customer came up to us and said we're going riding after this and ours blew out. And so we ripped Jared Fortner's off his bike. Jared Fortner's an awesome kid. We gave the customer Jared's part so they could go riding and we came home. We haven't really ridden since then. So I got the new slave cylinder in, and if you have a beta, you're probably gonna be doing this at some point or another. They're just seals inside these slave cylinders. So come on in, Rylan, and I'll show you what we're gonna do. This is obviously our clutch side, and our fill is gonna go in here. So in a minute, we're gonna pop this cap off, but this line comes all the way down, and this is our slave cylinder here. And on Jared Fortner's bike in particular, we already have the guard on here. So you folks might not have this. So when we do our job, to remove this, we have the hex head that we're gonna use, where you might just have eight millimeter bolts with a guard that comes all the way up and over. So you might have to pull that guard off, uh, like the stock plastic one, where ours is that billet aluminum. And let's go over to the counter here, and I'll show you the tools. I think this is all I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna do it the old school way. To, so if you guys are at home doing this, you can do it. It's like a $3 tool. I made this, a pop bottle with just some hose in it for bleeding. We like to run the Motul DOT4-660. And I recommend if you have a beta, you need to be flushing your clutch fluid every one to two years. If you race hair scrambles, you need to do this every year. If you're just trail riding, you need to flush your coolant every two years. Five mil hex head, an eight millimeter open end wrench, a 13 mil open end wrench, and then a good Phillips screwdriver to get your cap off. And lastly, if you call and you want to order parts and pieces for your slave cylinder from me at 3Cs, I'm just going to sell you the whole kit because I think this is like 60 bucks. It comes with the gasket, uh, the new cover, everything's on here, the bleeder screw, everything. And the reason is, is what fails is, I'll pull this back a little bit. There's a seal on the inside. I don't want to hurt Jared's here, but there's a seal on the inside of this and that's what fails on these and it lets your clutch fluid seep out and it ends up going inside the transmission because this passageway goes into the other side of the motor into your gearbox oil. So if you're losing your clutch halfway through a ride, it's probably because your seal is failing and you're losing your fluid. So first thing that we're gonna do, and this is a little bit different because I just put like a cap in here for now to wash Jared's bike. So we're not really starting fresh on this. So what I'm gonna do first is grab a rag. So I'll grab that. So Jared's bike has no fluid in it because the whole ride home from Virginia, we didn't have anything at the bottom of the banjo bolt. We just stuck a bottle up in there and taped it up. And so I didn't put this cap, this old one in there until I got home to wash it. So if I slide this in here, this is more for you guys at home probably wanting to do this just to keep everything from underneath getting soaked. Hopefully it doesn't block the view too much. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack this banjo bolt loose now. If I wait to do it afterwards, you're trying to hold it and crack it. And you wanna kinda of keep track of the orientation of how this cable's coming down. So when you go to reinstall it, you kinda of have a good idea of, of where that wants to be naturally. So what I'm gonna do, 13 mil, I'm just gonna crack this loose. And Jared's might already be loose just because we, no, I kinda of had a snug, so I didn't want it to get wet. So now that that's cracked loose, that's okay. I'm gonna set that down. And I think these are already loose here. If you're doing a slave cylinder, I would recommend, if we're selling you this, I would probably sell you this billet guard. We've had really good luck with these guards. We've been running them for, I don't know, 10 years on the betas. They work really good. And so you don't really have to worry about anything on the backside coming out. The only thing that would be in this passage, so it's gonna slide this out. So this goes straight into your clutch side. So if you leaned the bike over now, you would be getting your um, clutch oil coming out, but we're not. So I'm gonna pull the old gasket off, old gaskets off. So this is your push rod here that goes all the way into your clutch on the other side. And this is not part of this video, but I wanna explain it. If you're also experiencing some clutch fade, um, Jared's bike's perfect example, probably should put a new one in here you can see the dimple on the end of our push rod. So this is going all the way over to our throw out bearing on the, on the clutch basket. So you can see this little dimple. I'm not sure Rye, if that's, you can kind of see how shiny that is right in the middle. And the reason for that is because this little ball is, 
Oh, it's not in this one. Let me grab the new one. Hold on. This little ball right here is what's pushing on this. And I can feel it. Like I can feel how like it's, it's naturally centering itself. You might want to grab a new one of these as well because that little difference, the, the wear on that rod can actually make a big difference on your clutch feel. So I think these are like 20 bucks. So whenever, normally, I'll probably order one of these for Jared. When I'm doing this, we always do this as well just to, just to make things better. So what we're going to do is I'm going to slide this back in and this has to go in tapered side in. The throwout bearing is a skinnier fit. So I'm going to slide that back in. That didn't need to come out. I just wanted to show you guys that. Everything is pretty clean in here because I steam cleaned the bike. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, like I said, this one has no guts in it. This was just a spacer for me to wash the bike, but that's what the inside of it looks like. And again, there's probably not a lot of fluid. The good news with these though, is if you don't crack the cap on top yet, you might save a ton of your fluid inside of there. And so what I'm going to do, and again, normally I would recommend new crush washers while we're doing this, but I don't have those, or Jerry doesn't have those. I'm sure I have them on the shelf, but um, I've done this a lot of times without doing it. So I've got this all ready back together, and it's not tight yet, that's okay. And I, the new gasket is still behind there. I'm gonna kind of sneak it behind the counter shaft sprocket there. So kind of sneak it into its spot. I can't push it straight in because it, Jared's got a pretty big sprocket on the front of here. If you had a smaller sprocket in the front, it might sneak in a little bit easier. And this one's giving me a little bit of a trouble here. Let's see. I'm gonna sprocket, you know, I guess most of the time you might want to take your sprocket off too. Okay, so that slid back in. Nothing's hurt. I got the gasket lined up exactly how I want it. The holes look okay there, so maybe I should try to rotate that gasket just a little. There we go. And I'm just going to take my guard, slide it back on here, and just kind of take your time, make sure everything is lined up nicely. There might still be quite a bit of fluid in Jared's line, but if not, I'm going to we're gonna flush it all the way out. So even if there is fluid in there still, we're, we're gonna go all the way till it's flushed. So the three bolts are tight now, holding the slave cylinder back on the bike, but this is not tight yet. And it's pretty comfortable right there. You can see where it kind of wants to naturally just kind of come back to. And so we're just gonna take our 13 mil, tighten it down. We're not gonna kill it because there's crush washers in there. We don't need to hurt this. So we're just gonna kind of snug it down pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that right there. And now we gotta get this little cover off of here and I'm probably gonna take it all the way off just so it's completely out of the way. If I can get it, it's brand new. So I'll get this off. Let me grab some tools real quick. So at this point, I'm gonna slide my eight millimeter onto the bleeder screw and I'm just gonna practice with it. So like, there is closed, so I'm okay, and there is open. It doesn't have to go very far. I might even, uh, if it'll come off, just bring it like maybe more here. Open, clo or closed, open. That's, that's plenty of movement on it. And what's cool is if I take my homemade tool, just slide it right over the top, it's gonna catch all that extra fluid, and then I can monitor air bubbles because it's coming up and out, and I can see where there's an air bubble, and it's not really heavy enough. This, this can kind of sit on the foot peg if you back up a little bit. So you can kind of have it sit there, it'll be fine. And then back up a little bit, Rye. So what we did is I put um, a towel here on the shroud because this fluid will eat the plastics and graphics. And then I also took a strap. If you're trying to hold your front wheel completely straight, this is just like a really cheap way, an easy way to do it. I just take a strap around the pipe to hold the front tire because as I come up here and I'm trying to fill this with fluid, your handlebars can slap side to side and then you're, you're making a mess out of things. So. What we're gonna do, you can stay right there. I'm gonna grab and crack these loose. And you just wanna make sure you don't hurt it. Nice and easy. You don't have to kill these and you put them back together either. 
I think there is like a special, someone before said, well, you're using the wrong screwdriver, but a Phillips has worked for me forever. There could be something special, but I've never had to use it. You can see Jared's is uh, pretty dirty in there. Just, you know, that's what probably three seasons of him racing this bike has done. And this is just like a little bubble deflector, but it's in there sideways. See how I just pushed it back down? So that can sit in there. But you can see how dirty that fluid is in there. It's pretty um, metallic-y and just burnt. So it's a good thing we're doing all this anyway. It was due for it. So I'm gonna open the fluid up. And we're just gonna dump a bunch in there, try to not spill it. And you can see how the fresh fluids are mixing with it. It's hard to tell on camera, but it, it's mixing in there. So at this point, it's gonna take a few minutes to bleed this. This isn't like a two second process. So if you wanna back up, Rye, so you can kinda of get both. Um, what I'm gonna do is maybe I'll play with it up here for a second. Sorry, come back in. I'm just gonna flick this lever and you can see, try to concentrate on like those bubbles coming out, if it will. Maybe come over on this side, right there. Yep, and I'm just gonna vibrate this. And you can see those bubbles starting to come out. Hopefully you guys can see that on the camera. So me just creating some vibration is gonna put some, man, there's, that fluid is so dirty in there. So it's not gonna be a ton of bubbles yet because we don't have the bottom of the line cracked open. But fluids are definitely going down quite a bit already. Yeah, look, at it's already going down quite a bit. And it just takes a minute to do this. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna crack this bleeder at the bottom. If you wanna back up, I'll try to show this cracking open. So we're gonna open that. I'm gonna squeeze the clutch handle up on top. I'm gonna close the bottom, squeeze it again, open it, close it. So it's gonna take quite a while to create some suction in this master cylinder up here. Because this thing was completely empty on fluid. It's gonna take quite a while. Okay, there's some right there. You can see how dirty that fluid is right there at the bottom. <laughs> His bike is so dirty. All right, come back up. It's like pond water. Come back up here. And we need to, we gotta keep this topped off. You don't want any extra air bubbles going down in there because that defeats the whole purpose. And that's why we put the rag on the shroud because that just saved all of us there. It's pretty sweet. So I'm gonna flick this a couple more times. Yeah, you can see the air bubbles coming out there. Good size air bubbles. And if you had like a reverse bleeder, like a lot of people in this video are probably gonna go, oh, just use a reverse bleeder. You just attach it to the bottom and push the fluid from the bottom to the top. That's great. Not everybody has that. And everybody has an empty water bottle at home. So this is a great way to demonstrate how to do this. And it really doesn't take that much longer. So yep, if you focus on that, I got the clutch handle squeezed right now. And I'm gonna crack the bleeder so it puts all of its pressure through there. Oh man, look at those air bubbles. So that's why I like to have this. So then I can monitor and see how much air we're actually getting out. So that was a ton of air out of there just now. And I'm just playing with a clutch lever. Dude, incredibly enough, we're already getting clutch fuel. Look at those massive air bubbles right there. And this fluid is so dirty. So I'm also getting some more air bubbles up on top. I'm gonna, I'm squeezing on the top again and I'm holding it in and I'm gonna open this. I'm still squeezing on the clutch handle. I'm gonna reset my, my screw on the bottom and now I'm laying out on the clutch handle. Then we need to add a bunch of fluid on the top already. So if you, you can kind of just bounce around back and forth a little bit. Making a mess, jeez, look at all that spillage. So I'm just gonna play with this for a second up here. You can see some more air bubbles coming out of the top. I can, I'm already getting like, when I come in, back up just a little bit. Like, like right here, I'm already getting a clutch feel on the bar, which is pretty incredible because we haven't bled it that much yet. I'm gonna squeeze, hold, crack it loose. Not a lot of air bubbles that time. It's gotta work their way up or down. Definitely get a lot more clutch feel though. Quite a few little size air bubbles there. My tool is turning on me. 
He wants to flick out of the bike. Let's let it hang down. We're getting more and more clutch every time I do this. But even once I get clutch, I'm gonna keep going until all of Jared's old milky fluid is out. So at this point, we're just gonna bleed this for a few more minutes and then we'll come back and show you the end here. Okay, so we only spent like two or three more minutes. We really don't have much time in this. Got a total clutch feel to it. And if you zoom down here, right, we'll show that we're getting all the clear fluid. It's hard to tell in the video, but this is all the exact color of the fluid that um, we're putting into it. And here's an example of what the fluid did look like. It's like nasty. So at this point, I try to tip this down as far as I kind of keep that on, but I tip it down to drain all the fluid out. So I make a minimal amount of mess and it takes a second for this to happen. And then my patience runs out. And then I just grab like a paper towel and a pinch around it. I'm pinching the hose now. Make hardly any mess doing this. And then make sure your bleeder screw. We'll just give it one final little snug there. It's good, I don't have to kill it. Just wanna tighten it. And I'm gonna grab some starting fluid. Let me grab that real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray this down with starting fluid because it dries clean. And I wanna like kind of watch for leaks today. Make sure everything looked, turned out good. We don't have any issues. You don't wanna see like wetness around the banjo bolt anywhere. I'll probably hit it with more starting fluid after we're done with the video here, but. And then I'll probably hit it with an air jazz or two to get rid of it totally. We'll put our cap back on the bleeder and tighten that up. And then now we can go to the top of the bike ride. And I'll carry this up here. And I'm gonna kind of wipe this down just a little bit. I'm not gonna spray it yet until we get the cap back on. So that's pretty good. We're gonna get a Jared's cap. This cap looks okay. This bike's a 2020 and it was a former Beta race bike. Beta sent us this bike for Drew to race. So this bike's had a harder life than most. And we're just gonna make sure our seal is good, tighten these screws up. Again, you don't kill these screws, you just get them tight. And I left a fair amount of fluid up here in the master cylinder. So it's kind of squishing out and that's okay. I'd rather have extra up in there. I'm sure after the first ride, I'm gonna tell Jared to double check this, make sure everything looks good inside of there. It's easy to do. So we will have to play ride this bike before we go to the next race. And I'm just gonna fog this down real quick. Clean this all up. And then all of our oil residue is gone. Again, I can watch for anything leaking up here. So I'll hit it with the air jazzer here in a few minutes to kind of wrap this up. So cap is back on. We got a really good clutch fuel. The new slave cylinder is on, it's all blood. Everything is tight down there. And this was Jared at 3 Seas Recreation. Thank you guys so much for watching our channel. If you found it helpful, please consider subscribing. Ton of beta content, CF Moto, everything else in between. Enjoy the ride and we'll see you on the trail.